Hello and welcome to this deep dive presentation about the enhanced functionality around dynamic evidence corrections in Quorum Social Program Management version 702. In this presentation, we'll start by discussing the as-is scenario, that is, the state of the software prior to version 702. We'll then move on to an overview of the solution or enhancement, including descriptions of the to-be scenario, in other words, the changes in version 702. We'll then present some of the technical details of the changes, and we'll finish by telling you where you can find more information about the updates. To facilitate changes in an active evidence type version, or ETV, administrators must create a new in-edit ETV using the dynamic evidence editor, then make draft changes, and then activate the new version to make changes to the model or UI design for an evidence type. This is the correct process for making changes that can impact eligibility and entitlement. This process also enables customers to update evidence designs based on legislation changes. However, after a dynamic evidence type is published, changes to labels or descriptions may need to be made. For example, caseworkers may provide feedback that a label on a dynamic evidence page is confusing and causing some staff to input incorrect information. Administrators need to be able to update that label to remove the confusion. However, the larger need is to be able to make that change to all versions of that published evidence type. This ensures that the correct label is displayed no matter when the caseworkers are inputting the evidence. Another example of an evidence type that may need correction is descriptions. Corrections can include something as simple as a typo, a rewrite of a description, or where an administrator may want to add a description to a blank description field. Again, the larger need is to make the change to all versions of that published evidence description. Currently, the only way administrators can do this is by creating a new in-edit ETV via the Dynamic Evidence Editor, then make draft changes, and then activate the new version to make changes to the model or UI design for an evidence type, even though a change to a label has no impact on eligibility or entitlement. Taking the label example, this means that caseworkers will see the new label if entering the evidence after the new ETV takes effect. However, they will still see the old label on any retrospective changes. This may cause even more confusion. In this scenario, Jane is a business analyst who works for an SPM agency, and Robert is the administrator at the same agency. Jane has noticed that the word address is spelled incorrectly and the description is blank on the address evidence attribute. Jane has spoken to Robert. They know the correct description for the evidence attribute. However, they cannot add the description to an active ETV without creating a new ETV for that dynamic evidence. Robert, the administrator, cannot correct an active ETV. If he needs to make a correction to a cluster title or label name or add a description, he must create a new ETV. The new ETV will be correct going forward, but none of the corrections will be applied to any previous ETV. In Quorum version 702, a solution has been implemented to allow agencies to make corrections to dynamic evidence configurations. Dynamic evidence corrections are only permitted through the administrative workspace. An administrator can make selected corrections to dynamic evidence. Depending on certain conditions, an administrator can, through the dynamic evidence editor, correct mistakes and enter text on an active evidence type version. This solution focuses on the correction of descriptions in the administrator model and labels in the user interface. The solution provides a correction version history. The correction history includes a view of all corrections that were made to the ETV and details of who made the correction. These historical records are stored for traceability and auditability purposes only. It does not affect caseworkers, eligibility and entitlement, SIR calculations, and so on. In this scenario from Quorum version 702, Robert logs into the administration workspace. He navigates to the Rules and Evidence section and selects Dynamic Evidence. 
He must correct the address evidence, so he expands the address evidence. From the ETV action menu, he selects Correct Metadata. The Dynamic Evidence Editor opens in Correction Mode. Robert inputs the correct description on the model. He then selects the user interface and sees the spelling mistake. He corrects the spelling mistake. On returning to the dynamic evidence list, the ETV status is under correction because the changes have yet to be applied. Robert expands the ETV to show the correction version history. The active ETV from which the under correction copy was created is available to view. This enables Robert to compare the under correction copy to the active version. Robert is happy with the corrections, so he again chooses the ETV action menu and selects Activate. The corrections are applied. Here you can see that the previous ETV, before any corrections were made, is version 1 in the correction version history. This correction history acts as an audit trail of all corrections that have been made. It tells us when they were made and who made them. Now let's discuss some of the technical details behind the enhancement. Correcting dynamic evidence is enabled by default and cannot be configured. In the model view, administrators can edit the description field for the evidence properties and the description field for the attribute properties. Attribute properties are available for the different attribute types, such as data attribute, calculated attribute, address attribute, and related participant attribute. In the user interface view, administrators can edit the text fields for clusters. The name of the text fields varies depending on the type of cluster, such as attribute cluster properties, comments cluster, and address cluster. The text fields are names, titles, labels, and description. Administrators can also edit the attribute properties, such as title, description, and label. When a new text field, such as description, is added, the ID input field appears. The administrators can enter an ID, however, they cannot edit an ID. An administrator cannot correct evidence where the interface element is grayed out. The full list of items that can be changed is specified in a whitelist file, which is loaded to the app resource table. Note that the online help cannot be edited. The corrected version history is stored as a snapshot for the ETV for traceability and auditability. You cannot delete, modify, or restore the snapshots through the application. If an administrator must amend an earlier ETV, it is recommended that they amend the earliest ETV first and then work sequentially to the most recent. The following steps summarize what occurs when the administrator corrects an ETV. The administrator selects Correct Metadata for the ETV. A clone of the active ETV is created and the status is set to Under Correction. The editor is opened. Fields in the whitelist are made editable. The administrator makes corrections in the model and user interface views. The administrator saves and activates the ETV. The system performs the following tasks. A snapshot of the previous active ETV, with the ETV data at the moment prior to the corrections being applied, is saved to a new table called Evidence Type Version Snapshot. The snapshot is used to show the correction version history for the ETV, including the XML metadata and properties for the default locale. The snapshots do not affect caseworkers, eligibility and entitlement, SIR calculations, and so on. The XML metadata and properties in the Evidence Type Version DEF table is updated. ETV properties files in App Resource are updated. Associated dynamically generated UIM is deleted from the app resource table. If changes were made in the model view, the data rule set and processing rule set are updated. For example, 
the description can be created or overwritten in the generated data rule set. Since the data rule set is used to access case evidence from eligibility and entitlement rules, a reassessment might be triggered. However, the eligibility result will not change. The status of the ETV is set to active. Caseworkers see the updated text in the generated pages for the ETV, that is, the page that corresponds to the date of the evidence. You can extract dynamic evidence using Extract Dynamic Evidence Configuration and Download Dynamic Evidence Metadata as you would normally. The Dynamic Evidence Configuration Extractor now also extracts the content of the Evidence Type Version Snapshot table. The Dynamic Evidence Corrections feature cannot be customized. In addition, you cannot change the whitelist. A new entity named Evidence Type Version Snapshot is introduced. There are no changes to existing tables. Note that, due to the triggering of reassessments, customers will need to plan the introduction of corrections to production data, as they would for any ETV changed. This graphic shows the changes that are made to the XML metadata in the Evidence Type Version Def table, which describes the dynamic ETV. In the model view, a description is added for the evidence properties. The description attribute is updated in the model part of the metadata. The graphic on the right shows a description that was added for the comments cluster. An ID was also specified. A new description element is added to the user interface part of the metadata. In addition, the text for the cluster description comments is added to the properties. You can find more information about this enhancement in the IBM Knowledge Center in the section entitled Correct Dynamic Evidence Type under the topic entitled Dynamic Evidence Types. There's also more information in the release notes for Curum version 702. This is IBM's standard legal disclaimer. And this concludes the presentation about the enhanced functionality around dynamic evidence corrections in Quorum Social Program Management version 702. Thank you for watching.